Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to hear from me today. Fort Hood is of great importance to and for the Army. But it is our people that are paramount. I wanted to come to Fort Hood so that I can listen to the force at every level, understand what soldiers endure, talk to leaders within the communities, and actively understand the culture here, both on and off base. Damas y caballeros, gracias por tomar el tiempo para escucharme hoy. Fort Hood es de gran importancia para el ejército, pero es nuestra gente la que es primordial. Quise venir a Fort Hood para poder escuchar a la fuerza a todos niveles, comprender lo que los soldados perduran, hablar con líderes dentro de las comunidades y comprender activamente la cultura aquí, tanto dentro y fuera como de la base. This year has been a challenging one for the nation. And because the Army is representative of the country, we have many of the same issues within our formation. With the explosion of social unrest across the nation following the murder of George Floyd, the Army is committed to taking a hard look at ourselves. And in doing so, there has been a reckoning. Este año ha sido un reto para la nación, y debido a que el ejército es representativo del país, tenemos muchos de los mismos problemas dentro de nuestra formación. Con la explosión de disturbios sociales en todo el país, tras el, asesin el asesinato de George Floyd, el ejército se ha compre comprometido a mirarnos a nosotros mismos, y al hacerlo, ha habido un ajuste de cuentas. We have to address the challenges and barriers that our soldiers endure. The murder of Specialist Vanessa Guillen has become a catalyst highlighting sexual harassment and sexual assault within the military. The loss of Vanessa has been felt in our formations, particularly here and across the nation. I can personally attest to these conversations. Over the past three weeks, I have traveled to Poland and Italy, and in both visits, soldiers have asked about this. Vanessa's story has served as a tipping point, where survivors spoke out on social media and shared their own trauma. We must honor her memory by creating enduring change, as one harassment and one assault is one too many. Tenemos que enfrentar los desafíos y las barreras que nuestros soldados sobrevivan. El asesinato de la especialista Vanessa Guillén se ha convertido en un catálisis que destaca el acoso sexual y el asalto sexual de, dentro del ejército. La pérdida de Vanessa se ha, se ha sentido en nuestras formaciones, especialmente aquí y en todo el país. Puedo, puedo atestiguar a estas conversaciones personalmente. Durante las últimas tres semanas, he viajado a Polonia e Italia, y en ambas visitas, los soldados preguntaron sobre esto. La historia de Vanessa ha servido como un punto de, de inflexión, donde los sobrevivientes hablaron de, en las redes sociales y compartieron su propio trama. Debemos honrar su legado creando un cambio dur duradero, ya que el acoso y un asalto es demasiado. The Army takes charges of sexual harassment and assault very seriously, and there is clearly more that must be done. I have directed an independent review of the command climate, and once complete, will provide an update to the media and the Congress. Ultimately, the results, findings, and recommendations will fuel an implementation team chaired by the Under Secretary of the Army and the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. El ejército toma los cargos de acoso sexual y asalto muy en serio, y claramente hay más por hacer. He dirigido una revisión independiente del clima del comando y, una vez completada, proporcionaré una actualización a los medios y al Congreso. En definitiva, los resultados, hallazgos y recomendaciones impulsarán un equipo de implementación presidido por el subsecretario del Ejército y el vicejefe del Estado Mayor del Ejército. In addition, we are rolling out project inclusion to address behaviors that tear at the fabric of our force, issues such as a lack of diversity, discrimination, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and suicides. Además, estamos implementando el proyecto inclusión para enfrentar a los comportamientos que desgarran el tejido de nuestra fuerza, temas como la falta de diversidad, la discriminación, el acoso sexual, el asalto sexual y suicidios. With that, I'll be happy to take your questions. All right, first question will go to Rose Bayer, Stars and Stripes. 
Hi, sir. Thank you for taking the time to come down to Texas. Um, my question relates to um, looking into the unit specifically. Um, I know from the outside looking in, there's been some instances where it seems like leadership maybe was negligent or didn't get the job done as far, even as early back as when Vanessa first went missing, all the way to Specialist Robinson being able to escape from barracks confinement. So I'm wondering what, what does it look like um, as you look into that unit and um, could we see someone maybe get relieved or something like that? So we have a, a series of investigations, obviously the, the criminal investigation related to the specific um, individuals that conduct, it conspired for the murder or helped to, to cover up the murder. Uh, so that's being handled by uh, the Assistant U.S. Attorney here in Texas. We have a 15-6 investigation into the unit as well as an independent review that will be uh, coming down to Fort Hood at the end of this month. So we'll have to do a lot of coordination on the findings related to these reviews. Uh, and then once that information comes back, make determinations of appropriate levels of accountability. Okay, and I just want to confirm in my follow-up, the 15-6, is that looking just at sexual harassment within 3rd CR, or is that also looking into um, sort of negligence as letting something like this continue or happen in the unit? Uh, I believe the 15-6 is specifically into uh, the issue of, for Vanessa, uh, for her, the, her murder, and then, uh, and then uh, so they'll find out specifics related to her, uh, that the climate, uh, command climate review that I referenced, that I instructed, the independent review, will come down and look also at the command climate installation. So is there uh, a sexual harassment type of toxic environment that exists that can help us better understand more broadly? Is it third ACR? Is it larger? Is it the entire installation? Okay, thank you. Anything you want to add, General? So the, uh, just sort of talking past each other, the 15-6 investigation into sexual harassment is looking at um, reports of harassment that were discovered as part of the investigation into Specialist Guillen's murder. Okay. I think that clears it up. Okay. Hi, Ms. McCarthy. My name is Jasmine Caldwell. I'm from KCEN, which is the NBC affiliate here locally. Um, and the question I wanted to ask is, uh, well, last week, uh, Vanessa Guillen's family met with Donald, President Donald Trump, and I was wondering, um, have you reached out to the family? Um, if you have, what did you talk to them about? If, if you have not, um, why haven't you reached out? Uh, so we have, I have also spoken publicly, but we have offered, we've sent condolences to the family. Obviously, uh, General McConville participated in a memorial service here. He actually met with the family for over an hour as well. Uh, I've said publicly, be very open to meeting with the family. We have not been uh, contacted directly about whether the family would want to meet with me directly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Secretary McCarthy, how are you? Uh, Brandon Hamilton I, at KWTX News 10, the CBS affiliate here. Uh, my question for you is being the Secretary of the Army, uh, not only Vanessa's case, but there have been other cases um, involving Fort Hood soldiers and sadly being found uh, murdered or dead um, surrounding the base. To the Americans that are watching and your leadership, what do you tell them to know that change is really going to happen? So I've met over the last 24 hours with uh, soldiers at every echelon private first classes all the way to the general officers uh, and told them that we are we're sending down an independent group of investigators to understand the root causes associated with the rise of, of uh, you know, felonies, violent acts, to better understand why this is happening at this installation. The numbers are high here. They are the highest in most cases for sexual assault and harassment and murders for our entire formation, the U.S. Army. So uh, we are getting an outside look to help us to get to those root causes and understand that so that we can make those changes. But well, the point of emphasis being that we're going to put every resource and all of the energy we can to this entire institution behind fixing these problems. And a follow up in terms of uh, Vanessa's case, how do you change a culture that, as we've learned to know, she was allegedly murdered on base and what transpired after, how do you change that culture? I, you know, I'm markedly disappointed and, and sad, saddened by that. Uh, one of our own 
killing a teammate. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a shot at the system and it rattles the system of the trust that you have to have in this profession because of just how hard it is and what we do around the world. Um, so, you know, it has hit us hard. And the only thing we can do is come together and have very hard conversations and invest in each other and learn about each other so that we know who our teammates are. I mean, I, I, did, I did nine sessions in the last 24 hours just for hours talking to soldiers. I'm from Chicago. This is where I grew up, my family, uh, and just doing more of that. And I think for us knowing each other better and, and improving upon the, the type of teammates that we are for the climate that we want and who we need to be, um, these are very difficult things. At times, there are people from, you know, we're the Army, we're a reflection of the country. And at times, some people infiltrate our ranks. We've got to find them, we've got to root them out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'm Steve Wilson with the Colleen Daily Herald here in town. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a little bit about um, uh, the Vanessa Gillian case, what, what we've been talking about here. Uh, there has been a bill that has been introduced or is about in the process of being prepared to be introduced. Uh, I am Vanessa Gillian Bill, and I was just wondering, do you support that bill specifically? Have you been in touch with members of Congress? So we, we are in constant communication with the committees of jurisdiction, and as they go through the National Defense Authorization Act, which we do every year, which lays out the authorities for the Department of Defense. So when they, they bring up uh, amendments like this to add to the bill, we communicate with the committee to best understand the intent of that language and also how to implement. So we are in conversations right now. Okay, so you do support at least the intent of the, of the bill. We have to really understand the clarity behind the language so that we know that we can implement it and that it will work in our formations. Okay. All right, thanks very much. Sure. Uh, Debbie Strauss with NBC News. Um, you announced Project Inclusion, which looks at things like lack of diversity and sexual harassment. Um, but before this, there was SHARPS, created you know, multiple years ago. And so why, after all these years, are we still talking about sexual harassment and the concept of a toxic culture? So um, the SHARP program, the Project Inclusion encompasses a lot of other things as well. Uh, with sexual harassment and sexual assault, it has been a challenge for the whole country as well as uh, the U.S. Army. And, and a lot of that is just the consistency of meeting and having the conversations like the ones we've had over the last 24 hours. They're hard, they're uncomfortable, but it's a way for us to continue to learn about each other and realize that an act like that is like a committing a fratricide within your own formation, of hurting a teammate. And uh, so we, uh, it's, it's that consistency in sustaining these conversations. At times they ebb and flow, so we have to have the discipline to do that every day. So where do you go from here after having these conversations? The, the conversations don't end. We have to keep doing them with the types of consistency, making that investment of time. Uh, the independent review will also help us at root causes specifically to this installation uh, related to that issue. Uh, so we have to continue to learn, but we have to continue to make the investment of our time to sit across from teammates and have very hard conversations. Would you consider rooting out uh, members of this installation? Could you be more specific? Um, if you find that there are systemic issues here after these conversations? If, if, uh, if the, you know, the conclusions are such that point to, uh, to leaders or individuals in particular, of course, we would take the appropriate accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sir. How are you today? Uh, this is Brandy Cruz, and I'm the uh, news editor for the Fort Hood Sentinel. I'm working in the Three Corps Public Affairs Office. I was wondering, after reading the affidavit released by Bell County, it didn't really seem like Vanessa's death had anything to do with sexual harassment. I was wondering, did you, has there actually been findings that, that say that she was, that sexual harassment played a part in this case? Uh, so uh, the investigations are ongoing to the point that General Eflon stated. What, what I, when my comments were specifically that it has ignited that issue within mm -hmm. our ranks, 
So to be very clear, that was yes. what my remarks were related to, and that is how many women have come out on social media, I am Vanessa too. Uh, so uh, that's what I was referencing. Uh, we are investigating to ensure uh, that there was no sexual harassment associated with that and with, or the investigations ongoing. All right, thank you. Hi, Secretary. Noelle Mendoza with Fox 44. A lot of people are heartbroken, calling for justice and demanding Fort Hood be shut down. How do you respond to those calls? So, uh, you know, the anger and frustration uh, is, in a case like Vanessa, it's necessary. I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed. I mean, we're heartbroken. Um, but there's still amazing contributions by men and women from this installation. These leaders that we've met over the last 24 hours are incredibly disappointed too. Vanessa's our teammate. And we let her down, we let her family down. And it hurts. And, uh, but the, the amazing contributions and people that are on this installation have to continue to endure. We rely on these units to protect our way of life. We're gonna do everything we can to prevent these types of things from happening again, to learn from this and to move on. Uh, but we will do everything we can to protect her legacy by making enduring changes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Adam Schindler, I'm with KXXV25, we're the ABC affiliate here. Um, there is a lot of other soldiers who have been reported missing and found dead. Um, is there a change that you're thinking about possibly making when it comes to reporting them AWOL instead of actually investigating them missing when they're found dead later? So this has been a, a topic of debate at the highest levels of the Army for the last several weeks of just our reporting policies associated with a soldier. Are they, are they AWOL? Are they dust one? Are they, what are they? And when do you make these determinations? Uh, and I think we do have to take a very hard look at that. General McConville, our Chief of Staff, and I have talked about this at length, of just how we do that and how we continue to look for our soldiers when they end up missing. And uh, so we're going to take a look at that, and we may make a change related to that downstream. Okay, and just to follow up on your, um, your, with your review, if it comes down to that there is leadership at certain levels and there is leadership change, how would you change leadership at a, a base of this size? It all depends on, you know, what the root causes point to at what echelon. Was it an individual? Was it a systemic problem? Uh, so... Um, you know, what we tried to do, these, these are some world-class investigators that we've got to help us with this. We told them, you know, we gave them broad intent, but we don't want to try to bracket their investigation. We want them to come back with what they learn, with fresh eyes, in order to help us understand our challenges. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chris Kilmore from ABC News. Um, I was just uh, wondering if you have any details about how Specialist Robinson was able to uh, leave the post and um, obtain a firearm uh, uh, in the hours before his uh, death. Um, I, do you have any specifics on that? Or are they, I mean, is this is under investigation, but do we, do we have? It's, it's under investigation. Okay, sir. so uh, okay. If we'll be able to, um, We'll be able to uh, relay those facts once the investigation concludes. Okay, and then um, I, similarly, uh, if there was any information about whether he was under a suicide watch or any other kind of formal observation before he absconded from the post. You mean medical supervision? Uh, well, just if, there, if uh, I know he was confined to his uh, barracks, uh, from what I understand, but I don't know if there was any additional uh, level of uh, observation to you know uh, make sure he was being uh, where he was uh, supposed issues, to be. Issues related to the lead up to his death, we'll be able to report that out once mm -hmm. the investigations are complete. Okay, thank you. Not, for clarity, he was not under arrest at the point that he fled the barracks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hugo Chavez from Univision. So um, the family, one hour ago, they say what you say, that they didn't receive any call or message from, from you. Do you have a special message for Guillén's family? Uh, so I, I send uh, written condolences 
uh, to the families. We uh, we send written condolences. I've sent a letter to the family. It's uh, it should, we usually send them hard copy. Uh, with respect to the family, uh, my deepest and sincerest condolences to the Guillen family. That we are incredibly disappointed that we let Vanessa down and we let their family down, and that we vow for the rest of our time in service in our life to prevent these types of acts and to find out how we could prevent them in the future so that it never happens again. Actually, the families say that tomorrow is going to be in here in front of Fort Hood at 4 p.m. Every, every Friday. So are you going to be here or no? I was flying back this evening to the Pentagon because uh, I have meetings tomorrow with the Secretary of Defense, but I can look at my schedule to see if we could accommodate that. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Eric Franklin with KWTX. As a veteran myself, I, I, I know that speaking with officers sometimes is hard. Did you get the desired result from speaking with the PFC, as you said earlier, that you wanted, or was it they're, where they're trying to tell you what you wanted to hear? No, I think the conversations were incredibly candid, uh, as they often are with soldiers. and. Uh, talking about issues that we have and how do we address them together, how do we perform better. So uh, I always learn whenever I have these opportunities. Excuse me. And uh, so it, it's just it's a great opportunity anytime I get out of the Pentagon and get down to units and have these types of discussions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Joel Lopez of 25 News, uh, the ABC affiliate here. Um, a lot of soldiers, families feel retaliation, especially during times like these. How is it you've been able to, the people you've communicated with on, on base, on post, um, how do you know that they're actually giving you the genuine answer and not just maybe people who are giving you kind of what you want to know? How, do you, how are you reaching out to the people who do fear retaliation and getting their genuine concerns? So, uh, you know, I meet with them and I'll be in there by myself or I'll have somebody from my staff that's like a rec you know, requisite grade. So that's how I kind of shape or frame the meetings. Um, we make sure that they understand that none of these things will be attributed to them directly uh, by name. Uh, and I just talk to them about who I am, where I grew up, and I try to emphasize to them I'm a person, I'm a human being just like you. And if you don't tell me about the challenges you face, there's no way to fix them, there's no way to address them to try to make them better. Uh, so to just try to make them feel comfortable in the discussion, it's not formal. Uh, we just kind of sit around a table and have a conversation. Usually try to do it over a meal uh, because people relax a little bit and they'll open themselves up and try to trust each other. Uh, we don't want the fear of retaliation. It's horrible, we don't want that. Uh, but in order to do that, you just have to be willing to invest the time, hours and hours of your day to do that. But how are you finding these people? Is it, do you have a list that you kind of go down or are you on your own walking around? And just so my staff will tell them kind of the grades that we're looking for, the skill sets, and try to go between various units. So uh, we, uh, we just try to be as random as we can in the way we find the men and women to have these discussions because we don't want some prepared kind of event. We just want to have what's on your mind. Thank you. Thank you, Sajil. We have time for one more question. Are there any more questions? Okay. Last question, sir. Hi, I'm Rocky Bridges with KCN News. Um, we'd like to know if uh, the president has spoken with you after he's spoken with the family. Uh, no, I got feedback from the meeting from Secretary of Defense, my boss, Dr. Mark Esper. Uh, and uh, but, uh, Directly, directly related to the discussion, you know, he had offered his condolences and he vowed to put every resource at his disposal to help address these types of challenges, uh, whether that's law enforcement or within the Department of Defense. And I, and I think I believe he offered even to pay for the funeral himself. Uh, so, uh, no, but he had about a 15-minute discussion with the Guillen family. Thank you, sir.